Imagine everything in its place. You open a drawer and instead of a pile of junk floating everywhere, you have perfectly sized boxes that match each one of the items in there. And the materials to do this for any given drawer in your home cost a fraction of buying bins and dividers at your local store. This is what I wanted, but I didn't think it would end with me buying a 3D printer. And what makes me think of this as smart home tech, you might ask? I'm Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel all about Apple and smart home tech. We've had smart smart lighting, smart temperature, smart home security for years, but I really think 3D printers combined with Gridfinity, which we'll get to in a minute, is the start of smart home organization. Think about it. You have a printing robot precision making containers for your drawers to keep you organized. In this video, we'll talk about what Gridfinity is, how you can use it with a 3D printer, and why I chose the Bamboo Lab A1 with an AMS unit for my setup. Gridfinity is an open source storage solution created by Zach Friedman. He announced it on his YouTube channel a few years ago. It consists of 42 by 42 millimeter squares in a grid pattern. Then you can print containers that have a matching grid pattern to snap into it. There are some variants out there like adding magnets for a stronger hold on containers, but overall the standard is very consistent and has spread to many different websites and tools. These tools, like my favorites we'll get into in a second, mean you don't need any background in 3D modeling to print your own containers for your stuff. You just need the ability to measure and lay out what you think makes sense. To get Gridfinity in your drawers, you first measure your drawers in millimeters. It's best if you can get a tape measure that has millimeters on it, like this Hoto one I like, instead of trying to convert from inches, if that's usually the measurement you'd use. Everything with 3D printing is done in metric measurements. Then you need to use a Gridfinity grid generator to make a grid to fit your space. I really like Perplexing Labs generator. It creates plates that lock together in the drawer. The plates also have numbers on the bottom to help you tell them apart, to guess which goes where. I'm here on my computer at gridfinity.perplexinglabs.com website. I'll link it in the description. And you might see something like this when you first go to the web page. You want to click on grid plates and then you can enter in millimeters the size of your drawer space you're trying to make a grid for. So let's do 310, let's say, by 425. And I could also change the size of the grid unit if I wanted to. There's a whole bunch of other options here. I could choose loose or standard interlocking. I just do a lot of the default settings. One noteworthy thing to point out here is this fill with half grid option. There's some designs of Gridfinity stuff you'll see that work with half units. So instead of 42 millimeters wide, it's going to be 21 millimeters wide. I haven't done anything with half size Gridfinity things yet, but I tend to just print it with that anyway. And then I just hit render and it'll figure out what a plate looks like for me. And in this case, we have no half size Gridfinity options. So it's just all the full squares, which is great. And then it adds a little bit of margin. So this is going to fit snug in our drawer. And then I can just hit download and it's going to download an STL file to my Mac. So I'm here in my downloads folder and I have the STL file. I'm going to right click on it and choose open in Bamboo Studio. And this is the software to control my 3D printer and you'll see that it puts it on one plate and it's not going to fit on one particular plate. So I'm, you know, with my A1 printer and so I can hit the add plate option here and I can add plates. But first, this is all still one object. So I need to go over to the objects sidebar, right click on my thing and then choose split. I choose to objects and then it's going to create individual pieces for each one of these pieces of the grid. And you can then drag these and you can print more than one of the smaller pieces on a particular plate. It's just going to save you time that way. And so I'm going to drag this one over here and then we just got to straighten out the rest of them, add a fourth plate and there we go. So then we just print out each one of these plates on their own and have our Gridfinity grid. The other detail you'll see here is which kind of filament I'm using. So you can then select in Bamboo Studio which filament you want. So I like to print my grids in black or gray. 
some kind of darker color. So then I just choose PLA matte and you'll see now it changed to render the grid. Then to actually send it to my printer, I choose slice plate and it's going to figure out what it needs to slice any of these plates. You can see this particular plate's gonna take about an hour to print and it's gonna use almost 33 grams of filament. Once you print all the plates for your grid, you need to install them in your drawer. Each plate for these grids typically takes about an hour to print, then snap them together in the drawer. After this, I typically put everything back in the drawer just as if Gridfinity didn't exist. Then I size up items in the drawer to see what boxes would fit them. Then you can go to my favorite Gridfinity box generator over at gridfinitygenerator.com to create the box you want. All right, so I'm here on gridfinitygenerator.com to print a box. Now, you'll notice here they do have an option if you have a 3D model of the thing you're trying to make a cutout for, you can take the time and make a custom cutout for Gridfinity with this tool as well. I don't tend to spend my time doing that. I'd rather just make a simple box. So I click here for create a box, and then it's gonna start me with a two by two Gridfinity grid and then I can adjust with the slider. So if I know I need a three by two grid or a four by two grid, I can just drag this slider to whatever size I want. So let's say we want a three by two grid and you can add some height to it. So I can adjust the Z index here and make it a much taller or deeper box. So you wanna measure how tall you want your box to be to fit whatever you need. Then you have some other options here. You could add magnets. I talked about that as a Gridfinity option as well. The other thing that I tend to use on this tool a bunch is thin lip. So if you have something that's gonna be right up against the edges of this box, then a thin lip will work better and give you some more margin on the edges for lifting it in and out of the box. But if you uncheck that, then you'll get this stackable style design where you can put multiple of these on top of each other. So then we need to create a wall in this case. So I can just add a wall here and you can also do things with ledges or scoops if that's what you're into. I hit the purple button to rotate this and then I'm just dragging this wall with the different arrow options. The blue determines the length and the red determines where it is. And then I can use the green to position it. Let's say I wanna put the wall right here and I could again measure relative to a Gridfinity grid how, where I wanna put the wall depending on what things I'm trying to put in here. And the walls can be a nice way to store stuff that inevitably does doesn't fit nicely in those 42 millimeter squares. So I could put the wall, let's say for something narrow, just a little bit into the Gridfinity grid and then it's gonna hold whatever that is nicely. And these walls automatically get higher or lower as I make the whole box higher or lower. So they go just under the lip of the box. And then I can go ahead and add another wall, go ahead and rotate that one so it's in parallel. Move that over here and then drag the blue arrow. Okay, cool. So now I can see the walls appearing on the sides here, which is nice. You want them to be the full length of the box so that they, they merge with the sides of the box. A freestanding wall just wouldn't work very well. And I don't even know if it would let you print that. But then now that I have my design, I'm gonna go ahead and export it. Now you can save it and create an account on this website. I don't do that. I just hit export, give it a custom file name if you want, and then hit export. It'll go to your downloads folder. So now I'm here in my downloads folder. I right click and open with Bamboo Studio again, cause I'm using a Bamboo Lab printer, but could be whatever app you're using for your printer. Then you'll see it's here on my plate and I can change what filament I want. Maybe I want this box to be red, so I'm printing it with my PLA matte filament. I could alternatively look at using it with the PET G option, right? So then it'll do all the math to figure out, okay, this is a, a PET G filament, different requirements for printing it. And then I choose slice plate. It's gonna figure it all out for me. And with PET G, it takes a little bit longer. So this will be a three hour and nine minute print. I also forgot to change, we'll talk about this in a minute, but I forgot to change this over to 0.16 millimeter optimal, hit slice. Yeah, now it's gonna take three hours and 22 minutes, but now it's gonna turn out to be a little bit better quality print. And then I can go through and send it to my printer. For some common items like pens, SD cards, or lip balm, people have made custom fitted Gridfinity options you can download from a place like the Bamboo Lab community or thangs.com. If you're in a hurry, you can print these from something like the Bamboo Lab mobile app. But 
be careful. Because if you're like me, lots of people online don't care as much about printing items at a high quality, or they might have just been working with different filaments or printers than you. And as I mentioned in the demo, I like to take items into Bamboo Studio where I can adjust the precision of the printer to my preferred 0.16 millimeter optimal setting, which gives me a better print even if it takes, let's say, 20% longer to print out. For a 3D printer, I picked the Bamboo Lab A1. The things that pushed me to the A1 from the cheaper A1 Mini were the increased bed size to fit larger items in one print and the increased bed temperature to give flexibility with what filaments I use. If I was looking to print more resilient, higher temperature filaments, or I was putting this printer in a less temperature and humidity controlled environment, like a garage, I would look at the X1 or higher end printers from Bamboo Lab. In that case, I might have gone without an AMS, at least at first, just to save money. Although the AMS units on those printers often protect from outside humidity, which is great. So what is an AMS, you might ask? Well, it's an automatic material system that can switch between different filaments automatically during a print. You can still print multicolor things without this, but you have to change the filaments yourself when prompted mid-print. My AMS lets me more easily print things like this unicorn I made for my daughter. For Gridfinity, it could allow you to add text to the boxes, which then you can easily add in Bamboo Studio. AMS AMS units can also be helpful to automatically switch from one roll to another roll of identical filament when you run out. This makes it easy to use every last bit of a roll without interrupting the print to reload. You might have heard me mention the word filament like a hundred times now and wondered what is filament? As you might have guessed, it's the strings of plastic material that your printer melts and puts through the nozzle to create whatever it's building. The most common type of filament is PLA. This has a relatively low melting point of 325 degrees Fahrenheit and it's easy to print and great for drawers inside your home. But if you want to make something for your car or semi outdoor space, maybe like a workshop in your garage, I think you should consider a more resilient filament like PETG. There are also filaments even more resilient than PETG with other properties, and I'll link Bamboo Lab's filament guide down below as a reference if you're interested in some of those options. To purchase filament, there are any number of places that sell it, and you aren't limited to the filament sold by your 3D printer manufacturer. But if, like me, you want the easiest path with Bamboo Lab printers, then I just buy their filament. Yes, it might be a little more expensive than some other options, but I know it's good quality and it comes with a cool RFID tag, so my AMS unit automatically recognizes the kind and color of filament I'm adding. Once you have spools from your original printer purchase, you can also save money by just getting more filament on a cardboard roll and not having to buy more plastic spool. Setting up the printer when you first get it takes some time to get the pieces together and let the printer calibrate. Then you print something called a Benchy with a Bamboo Lab printer to test the calibration. This is a small toy boat that I gave my kids and this boat resulted in them calling my 3D printer the toy machine. And an endless slew of requests of things they also wanted my toy machine to make for them. You need to make those in orange, Dad many of which you can find inside Bamboo Lab's mobile app. During the setup process, you link the printer to your Bamboo Lab account. Sending the printer items to print is done over the cloud, which means you can do it from anywhere. This is where having a surveillance camera pointed at the printer is helpful. My Bamboo Lab has a camera on the device and some improved time-lapse options, but I find all of these pale in comparison to what you might be used to with smart home video surveillance cameras. I put my Acara G5 Pro PoE camera here. Now, a little overkill, but it works great. One thing to keep in mind though, is many surveillance cameras are not designed to focus on things near the camera. I should have mounted my camera a little higher so it could better focus on what's on the printer. It's not a huge deal, but just something I would do differently if starting over. Now, this amazing new world of 3D printing is not without its downsides. The first is that you don't have to go too far in researching 3D printing before you find people online being alarmed at the potential fumes and microplastics that 3D printing can put in your air. I think plastics in the air is a valid concern, 
but not something to be too worried about if you take minimal precautions and stick to using PLA and PETG filament. You want your printer in a well-ventilated area and ideally with an air purifier nearby. I also don't sit near the printer for extended periods of time while it's printing. Higher-end enclosed printers like the Bamboo Lab X1 have built-in air filters to clean the air as it leaves the 3D printer, which can be especially nice if you're printing with stronger filaments, not to mention the temperature control, which we didn't get into. The next downside is that you might think of Gridfinity as a weekend project you could do in one go, and the truth is that it takes a lot more time for things to print. Each item takes on the order of hours to print, usually like one to three hours. This is a gradual process running in the background of the rest of your life, not something for one weekend. Another downside is that the plastic is, well, technically recyclable, not often accepted by a lot of recycling centers and usually takes some special handling. So it's not the most eco-friendly thing. You will print things you regret and need to throw out as well as the printer does generate little bits of what people call 3D printer poop or just these little bits of plastic as it's calibrating the nozzle for a particular print. So maybe if I get my way and all of you buy 3D printers and everybody in the US and the world has a 3D printer in their home, recycling centers will start to add this service. And there are ways you can find places to recycle your 3D printer filament. But in the broad scheme of things, it's harder to do than it should be and might as well be considered not recyclable, practically speaking. The last downside is that while there are some ways to print larger boxes like the Bento 3D printing system, the whole 3D printing organizer category is really ideal for smaller items like socks all the way down to the nuts and bolts of your life. You're still going to need to buy bins or shelves and drawer dividers for larger items. This is also an area where I haven't had as much time to explore because I have so many drawers that need organizers for small stuff. So maybe in a few months, I'll prove myself wrong here. But the end result is still well worth the wait and the complexity. Having your stuff organized properly is amazing. And as your needs change, your printer is right there to print new ways to store your new stuff. I also found the whole process great for decluttering and getting rid of things I didn't need or want anymore. Have you tried Gridfinity or 3D printing? What concerns or questions do you have? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks again so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.